Okay, everybody, today I'm also going to review The World Is Not Enough, the third out of four outings of Brosnan's performance as 007, featuring Robert Carlyle's Renard, Robert Coltrane as Valentin Sikowski, Sophie Marceau as Electric King, along with Denise Richards as Dr. Christmas Jones, Goldie as Bull, Serena Scott Thompson as Dr. Molly Warflash, and Ulrich Thompson as, as Davidoff, who was one of King's tip, top lieutenants. And I gotta say, very good for, for a Bond for film. I mean, just start up, excellent how it just starts out where Bond's at this bank, meeting this way in Spain, meeting to this West Banker. As you know, in spy movies, they love those Swiss banks. And of course, uh, with the banker getting assassinated and all by Renard's goon, and then he starts out on a trail right before he get, returns the, mo the, the money to, to M, who, which leads to, to Robert, British oil baron Robert King getting, getting killed in the explosion, and then and then, of course, Bond Jack's Q's boat for a, for an epic chase around London and all. I mean, talk about one of the badass speedboat chases of all time, along with one of the badass speedboats of movie history. And woof! How much of an epic chase scene was it? And of course, you get that. Intro performed by the band Garbage, which I gotta say for a name like Garbage, this is probably their only good song. Hey -o. And I gotta say, excellent performances by by Sikowski, who surprisingly was kind of done dirty in this movie with getting killed by Electric King, which was just. They bring him back for a sequel after an excellent job in Goldeneye. I mean, it could, it could have been like a it would have been awesome to have in like Die Another and Die Another Day or, or yeah, I'm surprised they. Yeah, I would say that about the, the Craig timeline, but I hadn't seen No Time to Die yet, so. So I'm going to hold off on that one. And I gave it to Sophie Marceau. Really excellent performance as Electric King. Along with Goldie as Bull. Because, I mean, always, always play like a gangster and all. all from this movie and Snatch. I mean, always two, two movies I know that guy from. With an infamous gold grill and all. I mean, and then of course you had have Denise Richards as Doctor Christmas Jones, who I might as well just say was not the worst Bond girl, but the worst named Bond girl. I mean, Christmas Jones, jeez, Mary Goodnight was worse. I mean. Come on. In a way, she should have been had her written down as like a spot, as like a CIA agent who's posing as a scientist instead of just actual scientist. And in a way, Richards was kind of a little bit unbelievable in that performance, but I can't completely knock her on that one. Although, according to Intermove Database, it was almost going to be Tiffany Feeson playing playing that role, but for some reason, they didn't go, choose her. And and for a Starship Troopers alumni, I kind of thought Dana Meyer would have been better better candidate because in her performance as Barb Gordon a couple of years later, 
She proved she could be a nerdy scientist. Wow. Well, Denise Richards is more like just it was just straight up eye candy the whole movie. And that, alongside that Lara Croft, Croft cosplay, which, like I said, they should have just made her an agent, agent too. So that they had like a scene where her, her and Bond just getting in a pistol shootout instead of a with with King's with Renard's guys instead of just another cliche dames on distress. And but then again, a lot of a lot of excellent ep action scenes for this one from the sp speedboat chase to the parahawk chase, which had Electra put in a herself in a situation is to try to get Bond out of the way because because she's the real villain in this movie. You know, from the old backstory of the kidnap victim who played stock got developed Stockholm syndrome with her captor and all. I mean the your captor after getting shot winds up falling in love with a woman who shot him and he's all impervious for to pain and all. After explained by Dr. Mono Wormflash, right after 007 seduces her, is her into, into clearing him for active duty after breaking his arm in a following following that chase at the beginning of the movie. And I gotta say, even she could have been a better candidate for for Christmas Jones, but. Oh, Robert Carlyle, I gotta say, excellent villain. I mean, as the old Russian terrorist and all. And, oof. Anyway, I kind of blew like crack.com had an excellent article about how this movie was similar to Dark Knight Rises and ways. Well, and yeah, I could definitely see it and all in frames, in a way, in a way at all, by how it's got the impervious villain. And a woman, ritual, but heiress, who turns traitor at the last minute, and then of course, which is about the similar to most of the similarities I could go on. And one of the rare occasions where M got in a situation, which surprisingly, until Scott, until the, until Spectre, only the Dench version of M gotten. Situation like in this one, she gets kidnapped and has to rely on Bond to save her. And then the whole scene of the chase and all, with the, the Bond going into the arrows of the chase at the beginning, then they had to had one encounter the Valentine's. Caviar factory, right when, right with Renard's goons and Electric King's helicopter, where that was badass fucking circular blades connected to a helicopter and all, just cut chop down trees and such. And I'm just like, hmm, that's an expensive and effective way to to come out that clear field. And talk about a waste of a good good BMW though, because oh. Brosnan, the Brosnan Bond loved them BMWs. Because Goldeneye, he had one. Tomorrow Never Dies had and wrecked one. And then this one, he has, a, has one, has a Z8. And wrecks that too. And an excellent portrayal of, of Q, Q by Desmond Llewellyn in what was his last movie. Which, in the preview for the VHS, has like a a fitting tribute with Carly Simon's Nobody Does It Better being played. And then you got excellent clip video ranging from Conrad to Brosnan montage alongside that, alongside the video for the theme song in the VHS copy. And of course, a lot of, with the movie, got a lot of excellent. 
of course, with Bond, he got the excellent action. I gotta say, well casted. Those not well written and I gotta say, in one case, Denise Richards was a decent Bond girl, but not the greatest Bond girl. And then you got, and with Carlisle, I can say it's kind of the best thing he's done as an actor alongside Formula 51. And I gotta give it to, old, to John Cleese. I mean, in his de debut as R. I mean, which is kind of a shame that he didn't get to do more more movies and all, because after dying over day, the sit the franchise was rebooted and all. Because yeah, because Cleese was a damn good perfect replacement for Q, and and of course, of course he always knocked it out of park. As long as along with Colin Salmon as, as Robinson. And then he had that, an old, another excellent scene was that winter in that little rig in the, under, in the pipe trying to defuse the bomb and then, woof. I don't know how badass that movie, that scene was. And, I mean, come on. Overall, I'm gonna have to give, give Worlds Not Enough at least a four out of five, although one bit of trivia before I go off is how how World's Not Enough was in the torture scene with, before Electric Hills Valentine and from how he got and surprisingly how he goes from Russian gangster to legit, legitimate businessman in the in his second outing because he looked more like a gangster in this mo movie than he did in Goldeneye. Compared to running a casino to, instead, of, instead of torturing Bond with Mini Driver trying to do a do Tammy Wynette songs. But back to what I was saying. World's Not Enough, as if you watched uh, Honor Her Majesty's Secret Service, was actually the Bond, the Bond family motto, motto, which, of course, debunks the whole 007 James Bond code net. Being a co another code name. Well, that is for the Connery Brosnan timeline anyway. From from how Bond was just Bond, cause cause like I mentioned, this movie had the family motto that was mentioned in Majesty's Secret Service, which was Lazenby's performance, and then later on, License to Kill. And for your eyes only, in spite of love me, also mentioned a dead wife, which was Tracy Draco from Magic Secret Service, and a core. And then you got the parents, the dead parents in the backstory, in a climbing accident, which was Golden Goldeneye. Overall, I'm gonna give this give Worlds Not Enough at least a four out of five. I mean. Great action, great cast, but bit on the cheesy side, which, which said a lot for the, for the Brosnan Bonds. And it was like, this was like one step above, above how the campiness of the Roger Moore ones were. But overall, overall, I hope y'all liked the video, subscribe, Enjoy, enjoy my video reviews and then along with them said movies I talked about and I keep dishing them out. All right, y'all. Peace.